An allergic reaction is a hypersensitive immune response to an otherwise harmless substance. Countless people are afflicted by allergies, often resulting in serious problems and even death. Allergies are caused by many substances, including dust, pollen, and foods. Typical symptoms include swelling, redness of skin, runny nose, itchiness, headache, and shortness of breath. Studying allergies has been one of the major efforts of the medical community for several decades, and a strong understanding has since emerged. The body's protection against pathogens, the immune system, consists of a variety of white blood cells. The immune response is initiated when white blood cells come into contact with foreign bodies called antigens. Once white blood cells recognize the antigen as a threat, many responses are possible. Some white blood cells neutralize the antigen by capturing and destroying them, while others send out chemical messengers that elicit a response from other cells. Certain white blood cells produce important proteins known as antibodies. Antibodies bind to antigens in a highly specific manner and persist after the antigen is removed. When that antigen is encountered again, the presence of antibodies in the blood and on cell surfaces result in an immediate response that can elicit the release of another molecule called histamine. Histamine ultimately leads to all the symptoms of allergies. Histamine is produced from the amino acid histidine and is normally stored in white blood cells called mast cells, or basophils. Upon stimulation by antigens, histamine is released in a process called degranulation. When other cells pick up the presence of histamine, responses like smooth muscle constriction and increased blood flow result in symptoms like runny noses and itchy eyes. When the mast cells release histamine in an allergic reaction, the histamine can go two places. Locally, it can interact with tissues, causing inflammation. It can also travel through the bloodstream to every spot in the body until it either interacts with a cell or it is eventually removed in the liver. Histamine interacts with receptors embedded in cell membranes. This can be understood by the lock and key model of protein receptors. The substrate, or the incoming molecule, acts like a key that only works for a very specific lock, the receptor. In this case, the histamine is the substrate for various histamine receptors. If a receptor is built for a different molecule, the histamine will not be able to bind to that receptor. There are four receptors for histamine, H1, H2, H3, and H4. Histamine fits into each one, but they have different functions on the other end. This animation depicts how the interaction of histamine with the receptor might look. When a histamine molecule binds to the top part of protein, it triggers a coupled reaction on the inside of the cell. Each receptor produces several responses. An important example of one of these signaling pathways involves a series of reactions that result in a buildup of calcium ions inside the cell. High concentration of calcium causes a cell to contract, which has visible effects throughout the body. Contraction of the blood vessels increases blood pressure. When it occurs in throat muscles, it causes coughing and difficulty breathing. Fortunately, treatment of allergies is now possible. Our understanding of histamine and its receptors have allowed for the production of various antihistamine drugs. These drugs work by interfering with the binding of histamine to its receptors. Ongoing research into histamine receptors and the entire allergic response also holds promises of new treatments. Thank you for your time and good luck with the following questions.